Hey guys, it's True with Guns America's Hunt 365, and today we're going to do a quick comparison of the Leica Geovid Pro 10 to 32s. They're a fairly new range finding bino, and the Sig Sauer Kilo 10K. So the reason that I feel like this is a fair comparison is because they're similarly priced. So the Leicas are $2,700, $2,800. I believe the, the Kilo 10Ks, the Sig Sauer 10Ks are around $2,500 on sale, but normally they're up around $3,000 uh, full retail. So they're both very expensive optics. So here's what I'm gonna break it down to for you. And I'm gonna go through and tell you why, but right off the bat, I'm just gonna tell you up front which one you should choose. And here's how this works. If you are a hunter and you spend hours and hours and hours and hours looking at through your glass and um, glassing is the most important aspect of what you do, then the Leica Geovid Pros are phenomenal. The glass is fantastic. The field of view is huge. Uh, the ergonomics are can literally, they're one of the best pairs that I've ever looked through for that. Uh, if you are a shooter, and you like to shoot and you like to shoot long range and you like to hit stuff at long range, then the SIG Kilo 10Ks, uh, the rangefinder way outperforms the one that's in the Leica. Now, that being said, the optics and the ergonomics um, are not even close to on par. So, are they horrible? Are they livable? Yeah, absolutely, but they're not as good. The optics are not as good. They're a little disappointing for the price point in the 10K. They have a bluish tint, bluish greenish, sort of underwater fish tank, greenish color tint to them. Um, I, you know, the light transmission's not as good, but the laser in them ranges 10,000 yards, which means that on a deer at 3,000, you're gonna actually get ranges pretty much every single time. Now, I have a lot of experience in the field with both of these. If I was gonna go shoot rock chucks or small targets at 1,000 yards or 1,500 yards, I would take this Kilo 10Ks all day, every day over the Leicas. If I was gonna go hunting, hunting range is out to 1,000 yards. The range finder is more than adequate. It ranges out to about I think 3,000 yards is what Leica says. But I can tell you this, um, I, in conditions similar to this, I took a shot at a coyote that was bedded down at 1,130 yards with the Leicas. They did the full applied ballistic calculation for me, and I missed by just a couple inches, um, like literally like this much, probably within the accuracy of the gun. But that's a really long shot, and it ranged them just fine. Um, Later, about a year later, six, eight months later during elk season, I had an elk across the canyon in snowy conditions, steep angle. I was prone in the snow on the other side of the canyon. I think it was like 538 yards. And I had to keep ranging over and over again with the Leicas to make sure I actually had the range that I needed and trusted was the accurate range. Whereas I think the SIGs would have given me the range instantly and it wouldn't have been an issue. Um, the ergonomics of these Leicas are phenomenal. They're light, they weigh 29 ounces. It's only a 32 millimeter lens on here objective, which is smaller. This is a 42. It's where they lose some of their weight. They have sort of a curved shape, which leads to um, uh, part of the, the good feel that they have. Uh, but the glass is phenomenal. It's like an almost 350, 340 something field of view. You can look up the specs, but, but big, wide, open, Light gathering is better than on the SIG kilos. So it's really gonna come down to how you use them. There's about a three ounce difference in weight. These weigh about three ounces more, which isn't huge, it's not significant. Neither of them are tanks. Both of them are gonna work. Like you can see, if I, if I could spot a deer out there two miles right now, I could still see them with the SIG kilos. Maybe the last 30, 40 seconds of light, I wouldn't be sure what it was, where maybe I could still tell with these. One thing that I had an issue with, and these could have been pre-production models, I got these before they were fully released, is I had a problem with the focus ring staying put. I ended up going to the hardware store on the Leicas and buying an O-ring, and we'll show you a close up here, but you can still see the O-ring sitting here around these, and it just locked them down. That way, every time I pulled them out of my binocular case, they weren't out of focus. So I imagine in production models that's been fixed, but I did have an issue. If it's an issue for you, O-ring from the hardware store right around this focus ring fixes it. It looks like it came that way from the factory now, but that was my solution for that. So this comes with applied ballistics light, the Leica does from the factory. 875 yards is your limit as far as ballistics. If you want applied ballistics full, like the complete elite version, it costs you a download. So I think it's $150 to have that. I don't know why they didn't just do it from the factory to begin with, but if you want it, that's what it costs. 
Um, and I highly recommend it. Applied Ballistics actually uses your specific BC, your velocity. This has a temperature, humidity, and barometric sensor in it. So does this. They also have angle sensors, so every time you take a rangefinder reading, they're calculating atmospherics for you. It basically replaces a Kestrel. Has Bluetooth, it will connect to your phone. Now this is the place where the SIG beats the Leica. Um, not only is the rangefinder better, more powerful, I think it's a little more like precise, uh, and it certainly ranges further on smaller things, but the app is substantially better on the, the SIG. It's way easier to change things, it's way easier to change the wind, the direction, the display inside of this is cutting edge phenomenal inside of the SIG Kilo 10,000s. It is a big matrix display, gives you lots of information. The display in this is insanely hard for me to see, it's hard for me to read, it's hard for me to navigate the menu in this uh, Leica. I think that they got like, a, I mean I couldn't give them a worse score, it looks like 1990s technology, like when the words come up I don't know what they say. So. Uh, Leica, if you watch this, fix your menus, fix your display, it could be better. Glass is spot on, it's right where it belongs. So guys, that's really what it comes down to. Menu, uh, the app is better in my opinion with the SIG. It's a little harder to use, although it's not hard to use, it's just not as good as the SIG. Display, not even close to as good. Uh, range finder is not as good, but the optics, the ergonomics are better. This one's gonna probably give you a few more ranges. I think SIG says something like 4,000. I think Leica gives you less, but they're both gonna last you pretty close to a full season. These are lighter. If weight means something to you, go that way. Uh, they're gonna be similar in price. So, you know, once you get up above $2,500, one or $200 more is not usually gonna be your deciding factor. So, both phenomenal. Um, one of the other things I'll point out here the Leica did is everything is internal on these SIGs. There's no lasers. Uh, Leica moved the laser outside of the housing. I think it's part of the reason their glass looks so much better on those um, than just about anything else I've seen. So I have compared these Leicas to my Swarovski 10 to 42s, which is not a fair comparison because these are only 32 millimeter objectives and they stood up right down to the last minute of light which is really impressive because those are really fan fantastic binoculars. Uh, these SIGs, once again, greenish color to the glass. Uh, they're a little bulky. I don't love the ergonomics. I feel like the glass is too close to the end of the objective here and it's easy to get it scratched. Uh, if there's gunk inside your binocular case, it rides around on those. But as far as like the menu, the display inside, the laser, how applied ballistics uh, full elite works, I mean, these things for a shooter, a guy that's out shooting regularly, cannot be beat. There's nothing better than these uh, as far as that goes. So depending on how you're going to use your binoculars really is going to determine how, which pair you buy here. I don't know that one is better than the other. It depends on how you're going to use them. So um, I hope that helps. Obviously, you can go to Sig Sauer's website, look up the Kilo 10K for the specs. This is the Leica GeoVid Pro. 10 to 32, in my opinion, it's the best combination of rangefinder and binocular for hunting um, that sort of exists as if you want good glass. Um, you know, at the downside of the menu, the display, and the rangefinder. So there's nothing wrong with this rangefinder. It works out to hunting distance is fine. It's not gonna be as quick. Uh, you might have to range it three or four times to be sure you got what you wanted. At least that's my experience. So uh, you can go to Leica's website for those as well. And uh, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more content like this. But we do test this stuff out. I did shoot an elk with these. Um, I've been bear hunting with them. I've shot at coyotes and hit, I mean, I've shot a lot of stuff using both sets. So either one of them will work for you, but that's the major differences. Uh, thanks for watching.